It is Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 107.9. I'm Maisha Simone, and sitting to the right of me, I have Mr. Leon Thomas. He is a singer. He is a song. He's a songwriter, mm -hmm. producer, actor. Yeah. Oh my goodness, like how are you doing? What's up, what's <laughs> up? I'm chilling, I'm chilling. I'm really happy to be here. It's been a vibe in Atlanta so far, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're very versatile. First of all, you're a Leo. I don't know much about Leos, but <laughs> <laughs> I do know that you're very hardworking. So yeah. out of all of those titles, before we get into, you know, like what it is that you do and breaking it down, what would you say mm -hmm. is your favorite thing to do out of all of those things I've just named? I would say music is definitely my favorite. You know, I come from a family of musicians. Um, it's definitely been something I've been focused on specifically for the past like eight years um, working with Babyface mentoring under him and um, then working with Boy Wonder and Drake and and uh, now with Todd Dolla Sign, I've been like around some of the greatest in the industry yeah. and uh, it's been a blessing to kind of do a lot of songs that people know now. Now was the transition hard getting into music from acting? It wasn't easy. I mean I know you say you do both and you no, have a passion no, no, for yeah. both. But... It definitely wasn't easy but um, you know around like 18 or 19 years old, I, I started doing uh, production and songwriting. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just a seamless transition from, from, from acting into music. And uh, I ended up with my first number one at like 20 years old, my first Grammy at 21. Oh, you wow. Know? So, like, Congratulations. I, like, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's been crazy, you know, especially working on the Babyface. Uh, I learned a lot. I feel like he, he understands how to really produce a record. And, uh, you know, he really put me in a lot of great rooms. And uh, working with Ariana Grande, she was also on my mm. show. Uh, Victoria's. That's a big one. Yeah, so so I ended up doing a lot of her first album. Is that where y'all met? Where you were like, yeah, it worked we out met that way on okay. the TV show. Yeah. Oh wow. So then we ended up being really good friends and uh, connecting through music. Actually, and you're able to use one career to exactly take care of the next. So one. it kind of all it. played into each other. You know. Yeah. yeah. Talk about growing up in New York. Growing up in New York was amazing. You know, um, it definitely started me off in musical theater because I was, you know, so close to Broadway growing up mm. in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, and that was an amazing opportunity to do, you know, three Broadway plays from wow. Lion King to Carolina Change, mm. The Color Purple, um, you know, really being in front of audiences eight times a week uh, mm -hmm. performing. And, you know, I think it really gave me a great affinity for performance. So now, like, when it comes to live shows, it's some of my favorite stuff mm. to do as an artist now because it's, you know, it's really how I started, and, and I really have New York to thank you know, for that. You know, that kind of reminds me of somebody else who was dynamic, Drake. You know, he went from acting to music, but doing it at the same time, Word. but that transitioned fully into it. I mean, yeah. you've even, you know, written songs for him, and SZA, well, like you I said, or no? Produce for him. Produce, I'm sorry, produce. Yeah, let me get yeah, it right. Yeah. You for, let, let me not say that, because yeah, the ghostwriter thing, like, we can't say don't right. Don't throw me in that one. <laughs> we can't Hold say on. you wrote any of Drake's songs. Yeah. He is pushing his own pen. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly, exactly. Yeah, More on no, the production side. More on the production side, so yeah. you produce uh, for him, and SZA, right. and Ari, Rihanna and yeah. Rick Ross and so yeah. many amazing people. Talk about mm -hmm. that experience, being able to, you know, you get that phone call and they're right. like, hey, I want Leon. You're a hot commodity. Talk about what that feels like. <laughs> it's an amazing <laughs> thing. You know, um, during COVID, uh, you know, he flew me out to the Bahamas to work on CLB, uh, Certified Lover Boy, um, mm -hmm. and Drake. Drake was really just such a cool dude. We actually talked a lot about the connection between acting and music. Yeah, that's and, amazing. And, and, you know, we, we definitely connected when it came to the music and it was really cool to see a lot of those records, that, you know, that were built out there, mm -hmm. you know, turn into, you know, an album that I still cherish to this day. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, yeah. a, a, it's, it's a huge deal, you know, growing up, high school, I was listening to Drake all the time. So yeah. to be involved with, you know, one of his albums was like, man. Now I need you, I need you, I need you to tell the truth. Do not flex because the cameras are on. Yeah, what's up? Who is your favorite person to work with so far? Man. Um... You know, I think my favorite person to work with so far, I would have to say is Ariana Grande because wow. I feel like we're actual friends. So Aww. when we get into the studio, we're like the energy, talking the about chemistry. life. Yeah, it's yeah. like real chemistry, you yeah. know? It kind of feels like uh, if you were to like make music with one of your childhood best friends, you know, and, and, and uh, it turned into records that stream crazy. You yes. know, it's, it's just such a seamless, very organic thing. Mm -hmm. We grew up jamming together and then now in our adult years, we're like, Still making records and doing our thing. That's amazing. I love Ariana Grande. You are so lucky. <laughs> She's really fire. She's really fire. Yeah, yeah she great is. Voice. And of all the things that you have going on, what would you say? When everybody has challenges, you know, when they yeah. when they're growing up in the industry, they're growing, they're prospering, you're persevering. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about what your biggest challenge has been, the side that people don't see, and how you were able to persevere through it. Right. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges. 
um, was was feeling unheard through my early twenties okay. as an artist. Um, but I think over the years I've really like grown a lot and developed into into who I am today. And mm -hmm. you know, like really looking back at it all, you know, I'm, I'm I'm super thankful for the opportunity to really hone in on my own skills and craft my own sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I just dropped an album called Electric Dust. Yes, and it's really fire to just see you know, people respond to my music, the music mm -hmm. that I've been holding on to for a real long time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the stuff that, you know, I definitely I definitely worked hard to get out there. So, yes. You know, it's cool yeah. to see it come together. Thank you for sharing that. Electric yeah. Dust, you're going on tour, what, yeah. November 27th, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. November 27th, you already have Indiana. three sold out dates. That's right. How does that feel? It feels amazing. <laughs> you know, we sold out on the first day, which was cool. Mm. And then, um, you know, we're still working on Chicago, so, you know, get your tickets, Chicago. But... Um, I'm really excited, you know, to just share my music with a fan base that's really there to see me. I've, I've been doing a lot of opening slots, mm -hmm. which is really cool because you can kind of win over new fans. Yes. But I feel like this feeling of really having my people all in one room mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, turning up for an hour is going to be dope. And speaking of fans, you've been, I mean, you have like 1.5 million followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. one point something million on Spotify, and you have big numbers, great, significant numbers, and mm -hmm. I always call it like a genuine following. Mm -hmm. um, how have you been able to just tap into your followers and, you know, leverage that? I mean, we've, uh, we've essentially grown up together, you okay. know. Um, I remember when we were using Instagram for the filters, you know, yeah. and like Twitter, <laughs> Twitter was yeah. like a new thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just interesting now seeing this group of people, um, you know, that has, that has been following me from the TV shows I was on and even from the music I was producing for other people mm -hmm. uh, grow up with me and, and, and still tap in and, and, and support the things that I'm doing. It means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, I do my best to really, you know, just just do as much content as possible. Mm -hmm. and, you know, my performance uh, videos definitely perform very well, which is dope. Yeah. <laughs> I love to just play music. I mean, that's another stage. You yes. Know? It's uh, a stage that, you know, where you can stage. put, like, Right. Thousands of people, millions of people in one in room. In one room. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I think that's yeah. amazing because I think right now with the algorithm being kind of weird and, you yeah. know, people not gaining as many followers, for you to be able to have that, jump ahead of that, cur that curb and, mm -hmm. and get that amount of followers and people behind you, I think that's dynamic. Yeah, yeah, it's real and it's organic. Yes. And um, I'm really excited to continue to build this this uh, this groundswell, this mm -hmm. real base. That yes, really real fan me. base. What you do know, you call been, your fan base? <laughs> you know, back in the day, I used to call them the Troopers. The Troopers. Uh, we need to find a new name. <laughs> find a new name. Why do no, you want to change it from the Troopers, I though? mean, I don't know. Rihanna I mean, got the honestly, Navy. you know what? You're right, because I'm really thinking about it. This has been war. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This really has been and war. And they've been rocking with you. So, yeah, no, nah, they've been with rocking you. with me. That's they've been a... rocking with me, so, you know, it's a vibe. But, I mean, I, like, I've been working with J. Cole a lot recently mm -hmm. and, you know, really studying his fan base and mm -hmm. how he really cultivated a cult following. Like that is a really Wait, 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 wait. Don't you just skim right past that like that wasn't a big deal. I've been working with J. Cole. and it's, No, that awesome. is a major thing. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank I mean, J. Cole, how did that even happen? How did you meet up with J. Cole? Um, Funny enough, when I was in uh, Bahamas working with Drake, uh, J. Cole was vacationing in Bahamas <laughs> with his family and uh, just pulled up to the studio one day and mm -hmm. we became pretty cool. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he's really good friends with um, a, a really good friend of mine, Boy Wanda, who mm -hmm. I also produce with a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, Boy Wanda invited me to, you know, come cook up with them. That's it's amazing. Been a, it's been a process. I mean, I'm hoping <laughs> those records get picked because all of them are, are, oh, are really Oh, it's amazing. done. You got to manifest it. It's done. Already amazing. Yeah, it's yes. already done. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Electric Dust, R&B album. Nice vibe. Talk about like why this album is so different from anything else that's out already. Well, listen, you know, I mixed this myself. I, I co-produced a lot of these records myself. Um, you know, these songs come from a very real place. I'm, I'm talking about uh, real situations in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, to be completely honest, I think my approach when it comes to the production is, is very unique to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm really excited for people to hear my take on R&B. I'm also using elements from alternative rock as well throughout the album and uh, some traditional, you know, um, R&B chords on a lot of records. But, you know, for a lot of it, I feel like it's it's just me experimenting, you know, trying new things and, and kind of blending genres. So, you well, know, tell everybody, world. tell everybody, please, please, please tell everybody how to go get this album, um, how they can stream it, um, what you have coming up. This is the time to plug yourself. Yeah, well, listen, um, <laughs> it's on all DSPs, meaning Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, whatever you use. And, uh, you know, continue to support me online on uh, Instagram at Leon Thomas on all social media sites. 
and uh, we can definitely tap in. I want y'all to check it out. Let me know what you think. And before we go, who is your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration is Stevie Wonder. Woo, I yeah. was not expecting that. Yeah, it's all right. I can see it, though. Yeah. It's a lot of talent there. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Leon, for joining us. Um, this was a great conversation. I feel like I learned a lot. And you're like an onion. There's many layers to you. So yeah, hope real. that everybody else who's tuned in, they get to tap in with you and get to know you a little bit more. And just thank you for sharing your story. Man, thank you for having me, for real. It's my Jesus Simone on Hot 107.9. We signing out.